So on old buildings, they leaked a lot, but they dried. The thing about these buildings is most of the buildings that we used to build, we didn't have insulation, we didn't have air tightness, so we had lots and lots and lots of airflow going around these things to dry them out. And what did we do? We built a building in 1930 that was a masonry building, so my walls were really cold. Then we put horsehair plaster on the inside and separate it with a little bit of wood maybe, or maybe we just put it on. That's a cold wall, what do we do? We put a lot of energy in to start heating us up and making us warm, and when we did that, we got the extra banded effect as we can drive the moisture out of the walls. We didn't have a lot of really spectacular failures because there wasn't much to fail. We, were make, you know, we weren't really making any wrong moves physics-wise. Now, we were making some wrong moves comfort-wise, it wasn't so comfortable for us, and we were making some wrong moves energy-wise, but we didn't have the education, we didn't have the materials to do any better. We started insulating our walls. And once we started insulating our walls, all of a sudden what we started doing is slowing down that heat flow through the wall, slowing down the drying potential of these buildings. And so if we did stupid stuff, like, for example, Wilmington, North Carolina. They had a building inspector in 1980 that said, you must put poly vapor barriers on the inside of your drywall. Even though the building code said, in hot, humid climates, you must dry to the inside and you must not do that. But he insisted on it. And they had, seven years later, a string of spectacular failures in Wilmington, North Carolina, where, where, where they were on the ocean. They never, they never dried. They never got low enough absolute humidity outside to allow the moisture that's in the walls to dry to the outside. So that moisture just built over time to where it just rotted these houses out. And I went down back in the mid 80s and there was a whole row of houses, vinyl siding, uh, wood siding, stucco, um, fiber cement, all of them being renovated. All of them whose, whose walls had been eaten down to two inches. You know, I mean, it just because of this building inspectors ignoring a basic building physics. So, we, when we start adding insulation and adding vapor barriers and things like that, we start impeding drying flow. And part of what we're doing when we're building these buildings, when we're designing these assemblies, is we've got to understand how the basic field physics work. And it's not hard to design a, a wall that works, but it's also very easy to design a wall that doesn't work. And it's really important to design a wall that works, develop a toolbox that works in your climate that you can build easily and repeatably, and then don't vary. Just use your toolbox and improve it. Continually improve that toolbox till it's like breathing for you.